What's up everybody? Kubert is back at it, and today we're going to unpack a few ways to tackle portfolio creation. Not everyone has the opportunity to build a personal site for their creative work. That's why many designers use platforms like Behance and Dribbble to showcase their projects. And remember, if your work on Behance is well presented, you can get an achievement badge. With the first method, I'll select a few shots from Dribbble and make a case study using standard Behance tools. If you don't have Dribbble shots, you can always use other prepped material. First, I'll choose shots that I want to show on Behance according to web interface themes and save them in the repository. Let's open up Behance and click Create a Project. Drag all the files here. To avoid selecting the files one by one, just open the folder and transfer all the files at once. You can reduce the width of the images and add padding. I'll do that with alternating padding. To mix up the static images a bit, I'll include a video. To add animations or video content on Behance, there are two options at the moment. Option one, if you just want to add a quick animation, you can upload it as a GIF with standard quality. Option two, use Vimeo to upload a video. You'll have to add the video to your Vimeo account and paste the embed code from there. Behance has its own video upload feature, but encoding takes a long time, and the main drawback is that they don't have autoplay or auto loop features. That's when, after opening up the project, the video launches automatically and repeats. So that's why I'm using Vimeo. Let's upload the videos. Open them up and copy the ID from the address bar. I'm clicking on the embed media icon and inserting the code. You can copy the code from the video description. The code includes the video address. A value of one means autoplay is on. With value zero, autoplay is off. Loop means that the video will repeat itself in cycles. Muted is on. Auto pause is off. I chose 1400 pixel width because that's the max width for all Behance projects. The video uploaded and everything works. I'll upload all the other videos the same way. I'm adding one more embed media block and inserting the code in there. Now I'm copying the video ID and replacing it in the code. Now we've got one more video up. Let's keep going for the other videos. Time to check what we've got. I'm clicking View a Preview. Everything looks fantastic. We just have a few little formalities to iron out. Let's click Continue. I input the project title. Let's edit the cover and use the first shot as a preview. I'm selecting Categories. Now I add tags, and if you want to, you can add the tools you used. I click Publish. So that was a super easy way of doing it. Now let's work on something a little more advanced. We're going to prep our entire case study in Figma. I make an artboard that's 1400 pixels wide and 10,000 pixels high. Remember, that's the max width on Behance. I decided to use a project from a McDonald's kiosk redesign competition. I'll copy all the models and transfer them to the artboard we made. Since this presentation is all about a specific case and we're following a theme, let's start with the UX. 
First up, we have the Cuberto logo. Can't do without the essentials. Now, let's place the McDonald's logo below and find it in SVG format right away. Adding a header and brief description on the left. To make an artboard into a PNG, I use the Flatten Selection to Bitmap plugin, but you can also just do a straightforward export if that's easier. To the right of the header, I'm adding one of the interface screens. A little later, I'll make a mock-up of the kiosk so people don't get the wrong idea that it's a mobile app. Below, I'll break it up into screens, and the first thing we'll see is Start Screen. Since I'm just marking the structure for now, I'll renew the screens later. I have an interface in night mode. This will mix up the feed nicely. I'll show a few different screens. We'll have an animation block below. I'm drawing a rectangle with 16 by 9 proportions and 100 pixel padding on the edges. Behance lets you add either a full width video or 100 pixel padding. We'll add an order interface section beneath the video and a block containing that case animation. The interface will also show a burger customization. We can add the same screen in dark theme. The final block will have the case for placing an order and a footer for the entire project. This is how you should format cases in your portfolio, with detail, smart arrangement, logic, and passion. Let's move on to visuals. I'm adding the kiosk mock-up that I prepared. There's nothing tricky in this case, just a few shapes drawn in Figma with the real kiosk in mind. Along the project feed, we'll encounter various key visuals. First, they support the kiosk interface visually and second, they make the case study more dynamic. We've marked the style, and now let's format everything else in the same style.
The next interface screenshots won't use the kiosk mockup because it'll look overwhelming and will ruin the presentation. But let's maintain our style by rounding out the edges on the screenshots. I'm adding typography to the presentation and enlarging some headers. They'll act as separators between blocks. Let's keep it up with the corporate colors and add yellow for the background. After briefly reviewing what we've done so far, I'm noticing that the headers look a bit empty. We can always add more text, of course, but I prefer to play around with cosmetics. For instance, how about a wavy line beneath the header? I draw it with pencil, select the color and stroke width, and then remove unnecessary vector points. Time to replace the dummy text with the real deal. To avoid adjusting fonts and indents in every block, I just delete the previous block, insert the new one, and change the text. From now on, the blocks will be duplicated and I'm just repeating the process, changing up the screenshots and texts. To approximate our selected style, I'm adding a dummy to where the animation will be.
Now I'm adjusting vertical padding so that it's the same everywhere. As you can see, we've got ourselves a lengthy feed. If you save it as one PNG, it won't fit into the Behance limits for image height. And when you open an artboard like this, it'll take forever to load. What we need to do is cut up this artboard into a bunch of little sections. I'm using the slice tool. Obviously, we'll be cutting the blocks methodically instead of randomly. With the right cut, users who see your project on Behance can select the artboard sections that are relevant to them from the Pinterest doc. It's in your best interest to have every slice look dope as fuck. At the very least, the interface screens shouldn't be separated into a bunch of images. I'm adding links to social media sites beneath, and I'm using Behance tools to do it. Now that I've marked everything, I'm selecting all the slices, indicating two times size and export so that it looks slick on the retina display. I'm opening Behance, creating a project. Now let's select all the rendered images and transfer them into the project with drag and drop. The images are added numerically to the file name, one, two, three, and so on, so that everything gets placed in the right order. If your order gets messed up, just click the Edit button and then select Reorder Project to change the slide order. I've added everything, but there are white indents between blocks. This can be removed in Styles and Content Spacing. Now everything looks great. We just have to add the animations which I made earlier. I'll put them in just like in our first approach by using Embed Code and Vimeo. Remember, you can copy it from the description. I've added the video, but there are white spaces on the left and right. This also gets fixed in Styles. Just go to Background Color and copy the color from Figma. Let's repeat the process with the other videos.